How are you ladies doing today? We're doing fine. Good, good. I just want to be faithful to come love you a bit and uh, just, just talk to you about your life and your soul. Mm -hmm. uh, your life is precious. Are your you your soul is eternal. Bible? Uh, this is a Bible right here, so. <laughs> uh, what Bible? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And normally you're not out here. Yes, yes. Uh, we're from Portland, from Iowa. He's from California. Right here. Um, but I brought the rain from Portland. Do you like it? No. No? Oh, I'm so sorry. You need to go home, Chuck. It makes things green. It, make, it makes things very green. <laughs> yes. Yes, we get nine months of it. We could give you a couple months of it even if you like. Um, that would be that would be great. That would be great. Anyway, I love to love my Jehovah's Witness neighbors. Every year I go to the Jehovah's Witness conference to talk to them, to, to preach the gospel there, and it's my joy. Uh, unfortunately, they won't they won't come out and talk with me. And uh, even those who try to come talk with me, I, I call them. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't mean to be offensive. I call them watch dogs, watch tower, watch dog, because they they watch. If somebody stops to talk with me, they come get them and drag them away, against their will even. And it's it's just uh, kind of a... No, I don't believe they even do that. No, no, they, they do. They step in between us and they slowly back them away, even when they're wanting to talk. Well, that's, that's different from dragging people away. Well, no, I don't mean literally dragging away, yes. Okay, yes. and if it's an assembly, I right. understand why, because yeah. that's the whole... What? And we're having an assembly actually, actually, they, they are outside um, because there's there are breaks, and so they come out and uh, on these breaks, <laughs> I left the umbrella in the car. Because who needs an umbrella in sunny Southern California? Huh? <laughs> Tell me that. Who needs an umbrella? Not me. Anyway, anyway, it's my privilege to talk to them. Yeah, and and ultimately, ultimately, uh, in Exodus chapter 20, it says, "Thou shalt not make." any graven images, nor bow down to them, nor serve them. Um, it's the law of God, one of the Ten Commandments. And it goes on to say that those who do, God speaking, hate me. And he says it'll pour his wrath on those who hate him to the third and fourth generation. Okay. It's that idolatry is a very serious sin. And that you will abide under the wrath of God as idolatry following a false Christ. Yes. You know, the point is that a Jesus who is the who is the Archangel Michael is not the Jesus of Scripture. That, that's another Jesus, and he cannot save you. That is an idol. The one true God, the one true God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The one true God um, can save you. Well, you have to do your research because if you really do your research, if you go back and see the oldest Bible, Jehovah's name is all through those Bibles. Right. And so you can't... I wish I could open my Bible right now. This is rather frustrating. Well, maybe in, in, that's your maybe in whatever <laughs> you don't need to look. The, Bible, the bottom line is... Well, you do. Is this. No. You do, because no. in Isaiah the chapter... Bottom, no, the bottom line is this. If you really do your research, and you go uh -huh. back to the original Bible way back when, where Jehovah's name is all through it, yeah. then it shows by the scriptures that it always Sorry. speaks about either his son talking to the father, or the sure. father speaking to the son. Right. And so that's what we go by. We go back to the original yeah. um, teaching. Sure. And so, sure. you're teaching, so, you don't believe in so we don't so, about this and so well I do because I love you and I don't want you to go to hell no and you're going to go to hell no I'm, it's not what I'm thinking it's what I know it's what I know because Revelation 21 verse 8 says that all idolaters will be cast in the lake of fire and brimstone you know what and so you came here with a purpose yeah the purpose is to love you hold on I'm not done I'm not done yeah I know Hebrews chapter 1 Hebrews chapter 1 we heard you out speaks of Jesus Christ on the same plane and in agreement. Hebrews 1. Have a great day. Hebrews 1 speaks of Jesus Christ being our day. creator, being the sustainer, have a great day. being the sustainer of the universe that he created, uh, being the one who is to be worshipped. God the Father says of God the Son. We are Bible readers. We don't want to hear you. Ma'am, you're watchtower readers you. and you've subjected the Bible to the Word of God. So continue to walk on. No, ma'am. I'm going to love you. Else. You're welcome to move on, but I'm going to love you. That's not 
Oh, it is actually. No, because I don't want you to go to hell. No. no. I don't want you to go to hell. So to listen. To hell. So listen. No. Hebrews chapter one. Jesus no. is the creator. Jesus is the sustainer of creation. Jesus, you're welcome to call the police. Jesus, Jesus did what? Jesus created. Jesus sustained. What else did Jesus do? Ah, Jesus is to be worshipped by the angels, says the Father. The Father says that all the angels should worship Jesus. What is Michael? What is Michael? Michael's an angel. The Father would not say that all the angels should worship another angel. But the Father said that all the angels, all the heavenly hosts, should worship Jesus, God the Son. The Father in Hebrews 1 said that Jesus is Lord, capital L-O-R-D, Jehovah. In all the years that I've talked with people, born again Christians, sure. do not listen. Yeah. Do not yeah. listen. And, and Jehovah's Witnesses like to talk and own listen. the conversation and not let born again Christians talk to them. Are you letting you don't You don't want to talk. No. You, you don't want to hear the truth, but you're going to hear the truth. No. Hebrews chapter 1 slays, slays your false Christ. Hebrews chapter 1 lifts up Jesus the creator, Jesus the sustainer of creation. No, I'm loving you, ma'am. And Jesus who is to be worshipped by all the angels. You find that same Jesus in Revelation chapter 5 being worshipped by who? All the heavenly host, all the angels, right? And yet, what does Isaiah say? You have nothing to say. What does Isaiah you say? No you have nothing to say. No, I'm not. Actually, I do. In Isaiah, you know what it says? God says, God says, I'll not share my glory with anyone. And yet, God the Father commands all the angels to worship God the Son. you don't know what you're talking about. You're spreading all these things. Oh, ma'am. Now, that, that's just foolishness speaking, ma'am. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Jesus is our creator, God. Jesus is our sustainer. You're stuck on that, aren't you? Yes, because I'm I'm driving home that truth. I want you to go home and read it. And and Hebrews chapter one, God the Father says that all the angels should worship Jesus. Hold on. And God the Father says that Jesus, Jesus. I'm still doing chapter one. When I'm done, we can talk about something else. God the Father says that Jesus is the Lord. Capital L O R D. Jehovah. Jehovah. That's what God the Father says about God the Son in Hebrews chapter 1. God the Father calls him Jehovah, and God the Father calls him God. Well, praise God this is America, and we're free to stand and talk. That's right. Yes, which is why you're here, which is why I'm here. Without being harassed. Yes, you're not being harassed, you're being loved. You're being loved. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, we're talking about Hebrews chapter 1. We're, oh yes we are. Hebrews chapter 1, where we're, okay. Jesus Christ is our creator. No, I can't. Jesus Christ is our creator. Jesus Christ is the sustainer of all creation. Jesus Christ is called Jehovah by the Father in Hebrews chapter 1. And Jesus Christ is called God by God the Father in Hebrews chapter 1. And Jesus Christ is all of that. Jesus Christ is our creator. Jesus Christ is our Jehovah. And Jesus Christ is our God. And ladies, you're blaspheming Jesus, ma'am. You're blaspheming him and your idolatry. And you're going to die in your sins, ladies, unless you repent. You're going to die into the wrath of God as idolaters. You know why you run? Because you're, you have nothing to stand on. Will you also run, sir? That's good. That's good. But see, you're out here binding men and women up under doctrines of demons damning their souls to hell with the lies of the watchtower and unfortunately unfortunately most christians don't love you enough to come talk to you would be my pastor if i could i'm his uncle you following him because no that, that's hilarious my friend that it that a man who's a member of a cult would would tell someone to be careful following a man who is a pastor in the church of jesus christ who ministers the word of god do you understand the nature of a cult you know what a cult does every cult is, is Mormonism a cult? Tell me, is Mormonism a cult? It is, just so you know. Is Catholicism a cult? It is. What I find with my Jehovah's Witness friends is they don't want to call other cults cults because it would condemn themselves. Because the nature of every cult, like Mormonism, like Roman Catholicism, like even Islam, it's a cult. Here's the nature of a cult. They all say they believe the Bible. They say they believe the Old Testament. 
they say they believe the New Testament, only we have another testament. In fact, the Mormons literally call it that, the Book of Mormon, another testament. Uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses have the Watchtower. The uh, Muslims have the Quran. They say yes to the Old Testament, yes to the New Testament, and a Quran. Roman Catholicism has the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church, the Catechism. And what every cult does is they take the Bible and they add to it their own doctrines, their own revelations from their own false prophets or their authoritative sources. But then they can no longer hear the Bible because they only read the Bible through the lens of the Watchtower writings or through the lens of the declarations of the Pope or the Catechism of Rome or through the lens of the Muslim Quran. And so they can no longer see the glory and truth of the true God in the Holy Scriptures. And friend, that's exactly where you're at. Like every other cult, you're in a, a group that says yes to the Old Testament, yes to the New Testament, yet we have another testimony, we have another prophetic word. And yet your prophecy, your prophetic word, completely alters the character and nature of God. Your prophetic word completely alters the work of God the Son. You both have perverted God's nature, you deny the deity of Jesus Christ, and you deny the atonement of Christ, the work of Christ on the cross. And that's the nature of a cult. And I don't use that word to insult you, but that's where you're at. You're standing here representing a cult, helping bind men and women's souls up under doctrines of demons, trying to gain your salvation through your good works. Your good works being tracked distribution. Only, my friends, your good works are actually evil works. You're serving the devil. You're serving the devil as you represent an antichrist, just like the Pope represents an antichrist in the form of a wafer, right? That's their false Christ, the Church of Rome. Eat this wafer, it's Jesus. Eat this wafer, it's the transubstantiated Christ called out of heaven in this bread. And if you eat the wafer and worship the wafer, your sins will be washed away. That's the heresy of Rome. But you have a wafer as well. It's not actual bread, but it's Michael the Archangel. Eat, believe upon, place your faith in this Jesus who is Michael the Archangel. Follow him and you'll be saved. Do these works and you'll be saved. But the Bible is explicitly clear that all of our righteousnesses, all the works of our hands, are filthy rags. You're placing your faith in a false Christ, in a false prophecy, and in filthy rags, the works of your hands. My friends, your hearts, as all men, Jeremiah 17:9 has impugned, has already judged. The heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And you're manifesting your desperate wickedness in this. You have dedicated your lives to come out and blaspheme Christ and to call the true declaration of Christ's identity and gospel stupid, the lady said. Stupid. That's stupid to declare, I cannot. She said, it's stupid to declare. You don't go and stand in front of you. To declare. You're welcome to come down. Um, he said, she said, that's stupid to declare Jesus as the creator. Jesus as the sustainer of creation. Jesus as Jehovah God. And Jesus as God of very gods and flesh. But that's exactly what Hebrews 1 declares, if you'll just read it without the lens of the Watchtower tracks. And that's what John 1, 1 declares as well. And I know you know it, but you've, you've taken out or inserted rather the definite article A in there, but let me go ahead and declare it to you anyway. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, not a God, but was God. All things were made through Him, and without, without Him nothing was made that was made. Just like Hebrews chapter 1, Jesus is the Creator, and Jesus is God. Only in John 1.14 we find the Word became flesh, and we beheld His glory. He possessed the innate glory of God because He was God. We beheld His glory, the glory as of that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. My friends, Jesus is God of very gods and flesh who took upon Himself the additional nature of humanity that His works might save us. His hands, not, our, not the work of our hands, but His hands were pierced to save us from our sins. On the cross, He said, it is finished. He finished the work of redemption. He bowed his head, he gave up his spirit. In Greek it was, to tell us die. And then he bowed his head, gave up his spirit. He died 
paying the penalty of our sins. He was buried and he was resurrected on the third day. He has conquered sin and death. And my friends, he is the only Savior. There's one name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved, and it's the name of Jesus. No, no, no. I won't be here next Saturday. So I've only got now, and you've only got now. You might die today. You might die today. And so, my friend, turn to Christ. Turn to Christ. Look at all these people you could be talking to. Don't die in your sins. Your souls are important too. And you're helping damn them, right? You're the enemy of their souls. So I've come to love you. No, no, no. You can be saved. You can be saved. You can be saved. You won't be saved through me, nor will you be saved through you, nor will you be saved through Michael the Archangel. But you can be saved through Jesus, the Son of God. Some water, man. Jesus, the Son of God. Take a breath, guys. You know. You know. Take a breath. Give, 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 give me one second to digest everything you said. Do you know? Give me one second to digest everything you said. Jesus. You keep talking. I can't understand what you're saying. Jesus is in Genesis okay, chapter you know, one. You can understand. I'm not talking so fast. No, because you're going from one text to another. So let me digest what you're saying. I've talked to many and Jehovah's Witnesses. They go from one text saying. to another as well. I've been to your meetings. You go from one text to another. Okay. You're used to this. Let me digest. You can no, comprehend. Right here, people, but hear me. Mind. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Genesis chapter one, verse 26. What's it say? What's it say? It's God speaking, and God says, let us make man in our image. Is God schizophrenic? Does he have multiple personality disorder? What's going on there in Genesis 1, 26? Let us make man in our image. God is not schizophrenic. He doesn't have multiple personality disorder, but guess what? While God is one, as Deuteronomy 6, 4 says, the Lord our God, the Lord our God is one, he is yet plural in persons. Let us make man in our image. You know what Mormons do with John, or, uh, Genesis 1, 26? The cult of Mormonism? They say it's God the Father talking to God the Mother. Let us make man in our image. And that God the Father had celestial sex with God the Mother and made spirit babies that now have populated this planet. That, that's heresy. But what it actually is, is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit talking within the Godhead on the very first page, the very first chapter of the Holy Bible. Let us make man in our image. And then it says, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Now think about that. Let us, hey, let, us hey, don't push, sir. let us, let us, let us, let us, let us, let us make man in our image. We, we got, we got, we got us, we got us. And we've got our, and yet image. What, what is us? What is us? Jesus wouldn't do it. What is us? Jesus wouldn't do You're right. He would just cast you into the pit of hell. He do what it. is us? And he's going to unless you repent. Okay, but Jesus what is us? He didn't go there and preach like that. What is us? Read the Bible. My friend. This guy's like, you what is us? Us is plural. Hey. What is us? Like do you hear me? Yes, he would. Interact with the truth. Like he said, he would confess. What is us? Us is plural. What is image? Image is singular. Let us make man in our image. Plural and singular. One image. One image. One image. One God. And yet, three persons of the Godhead. Let us make man in our image. I'm going to pop on my umbrella. Excuse me. That's fine. I don't want to wait you. That's fine. Thank you. So let us make man in our image. That's what it says there. I want you to hear that. I'm trying to drive that into your heart and soul because I love you. I've heard it many times. I love times. you. Good. I'm glad you've heard it. Dwell now on let it. let me mull it over for a couple Dwell of days. Dwell on it. <laughs> You're funny, my friend. I like you. What's your name? I've spoken to What's Phil. your name? Chuck, Phil. I've spoken to, to you. What's your name? I've spoken to a lot of people that have your beliefs. So. Noah? Good name. You're, telling, you're not telling me anything that we haven't already heard. Ah, but here's the good news. Here's the good news. Faith comes by hearing, no, hearing the, the word of God. You, you can say, yet okay, be guys, saved. I'm sorry. You can yet I'm be being saved. being a little bit insistent, persistent. That's the good news. Go oh, I am way. being persistent. I don't want you to go to hell, go nor do I want you to lead others to hell. So I'm being said. persistent. He said, do not give the pearls to what? Swine. Oh, yes. we're swine. So yes, yeah. Don't That's an interesting use of that, right? Right. I appreciate what you're saying. I don't think you're swine. No. I think you're men created in the image of God. The there God, be swine out there the God, it, Father, right? Son, and Holy Spirit. Is that true or not? I think your souls are precious. Is that true or not? I think, I think you can yet be saved. <laughs> you know why? Because you're still living and breathing. You're still living and breathing. But what you got to do is open the Bible and read what it says on its own. Without the watchtower blinding you. Without the watchtower being the filter through which you look. 
open the Holy Scriptures. You know what the Scriptures say about themselves? Independent of the Watchtower, independent of the Quran, independent of the Book of Mormon, independent of the, of the, the declarations of the Pope, the Bible says all about itself that the Scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 3.15 Go to the Scriptures, my friends. Phil. Joel? Joel. Joel. Phil, Joel. Go to the Scriptures. The scriptures will make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. The scriptures are theonoustos, God breathed. And they're useful for what? For teaching, correction, rebuke, and training the righteousness, right? You don't want correction. You don't want rebuke. But because I love you, I'm bringing the word of God to bear upon you, to correct your heresy, you and to rebuke somebody, it. Buddy. You're again, to force me right now. again, you're welcome to, to leave. Force feed me. But I'm here to love you. They're I came a long ways to, to love you. I'm from Portland. It's a divine providence. God ordained, gas money. God ordained that you would be here and I would be here so I would get to love you today. And my hope is, I probably won't see you ever again in this world. My hope is I'll see you in heaven you yet to come. Though, right here. I do have friends. Here. Yeah, but he's from yeah. Iowa. <laughs> yeah. He'll come one day. He'll so, sit out here. So, yeah, I'll it's be nice back next year. Maybe I'll see you next March. But I hope I'll see you down there with us. We'll be here. Preaching the true Christ. We're here Christ. Monday through Sunday. Preaching the true so Christ. Here. Yeah. I know you're here as slaves to a false Christ, laboring to earn your salvation. I've been to your no, meetings. No, I actually work Monday through Friday, so no, you, I have my secular job. You, you, you come as slaves so to a false, a false Christ, there, huh? slaves to a false, you said you're here Monday you through Sunday. Here. I said our friends. <laughs> okay, that's group. fine. I'm not making a false statement. I'm just <laughs> believing your words. So you're laboring to earn your salvation. You can't earn it. All of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Galatians 5, 4. I'm going to have to open it. I'm getting a little tired. Mine's getting a little fuzzy. You got to take a breath, man. You got to take a breath, a breather. Sure. You're getting lightheaded. Thank I you. I want your Bible to get wet. That is kind of you. Galatians 5.4 It says, You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. You, you've been estranged from the true Christ. You've been cut off from Him. You attempt to be justified by law, whether it's the Old Testament Mosaic law, whether it's Roman Catholicism's law, whether it's Islam's law, prayer on Fridays, uh, five prayers a day to, to Mecca, so forth, or whether it's Jehovah's Witness law. When we attempt salvation through law, we have been estranged, cut off from Christ. We who attempt to be justified by law, you've fallen from grace. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, I know you know it, but hear it again. You have been saved by grace. That's the power, the power of God, through faith, not of yourselves. It's yeah, the gift of God. You believe that. The gift of God, lest man should boast. You can boast. And I've been to your meetings. It, it actually seems rather boastful as the people stand up and they, they say how many Bible studies they've started. They say how many tracts they've distributed. They're boasting their works that are going to save them. Are those their our righteousness. Meetings? What's that? You sure you didn't step into the wrong meeting? No, Jehovah's Witness Conference you don't in do Portland, that. Oregon. Oh, yes. We don't go up there and say how many tracks we play, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. In they, our yearbooks, we put that stuff. Oh, yeah. No, no. Do that, no. They, they brought up person after person. Um, but the point is... No, I think you went. To, you stepped into the wrong one, buddy. No, I didn't. The point is, is that if we trust in law, if we trust in any system of works righteousness... You're going to get pneumonia, try, man. Trying to... You know, if I die, I go to glory. That's a good day. That's okay. Hey, but a um, dead servant is not a good servant. <laughs> so, um, so, my friends, turn from that false Christ of the Watchtower that does not exist. Michael the Archangel. Go to Daniel, read about Michael the Archangel. Re read about how he what serves the one true God. Um, he's a messenger of God. He is not God. And then go to Hebrews and read about the true Jesus who is to be worshiped by all the angels. The true Jesus who is capital L-O-R-D, Jehovah. The true Jesus who is God, says the Father. The Father says He's Jehovah. The Father says He's God. The Father says all the angels ask, of heaven should worship name? Him. My name is Chuck. Chuck, let me ask you a quick question. Um, the Bible says that Jesus' followers are His brothers, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So does that mean that when we go to heaven, like you say, will we, will we, will we be God's brothers? Um, in a spiritual sense. In a spiritual sense. But well, no, not like God's Mormons. Sons. Not like Mormons. Both. We're the sons of God. We're, we're the brother of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. 
like he said to his physical brothers when they came to find him, when Mary and his brothers came, right? He said, these are my brothers, yeah, my sisters, my, my mother. Brother. Yeah, in a spiritual sense. Right. Yes, exactly. So then, so then God has brothers. In that spiritual sense, Jesus, God the Son, uh, so, has grafted us in, which, again, in your New Testament, what's it say? That he has adopted us to the adoption price of his own blood. So then adopted us in the family of God. Or God's brothers? Yeah. I know you're trying to make a conflict asking, there. I'm asking Listen, you. what's John 1 say? It says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Hold on. And that the Word created all things. Because Without Him, nothing was made that was made. Hold on. Saying, then it says, then it says, it says, all those who believe in Him are given the right to be what? To become children of God. Children of God. But then if we're Jesus' brothers, and that will make us God's brothers, <laughs> not God's sons, according to what you say. Which, if that's the case, then your belief of that scripture God the be, Father, be similar more to a God Mormon the Son, belief. God the Holy because Spirit. Because Mormons believe that they're all Is Mormonism one? a cult? Is Mormonism a cult? what I'm saying. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. So you're saying that if we're in the No, I, I know exactly what you're saying. We're both. The Bible says we're both children of God in the sense that we're children of the Father and, and brothers and sisters of the but Lord Jesus Chuck, adopted in. It's all a mystery. No, I'm not saying it's a mystery. I'm saying and it's quite clear in Scripture. Our minds are too finite I'm to saying it's quite it. clear in Scripture. It's infinitely clear. I'm saying Genesis 1.26 is infinitely clear. Let us make man in our image. That's not hard math. That's 2 plus 2 equals 4 theologically. So where's the Trinity? Let us make man. What's that? So where's the third person in that? Oh, there's plurality there. The Trinity's you not clear yet. Trinity, oh, absolutely. So yeah. Where, where was the Holy Spirit then? The, the Holy Spirit. How about Isaiah chapter 60? No, no, but you're, one. Putting, you're putting Genesis. In Isaiah 61, Jesus says that uh, the, the Holy Spirit and the Father have sent him to do what? To declare. No, no. In Genesis, you said, referring to that Jesus. Plurality in the Godhead God. okay, is revealed so in the very the first Holy page. That, oh. Back a few verses. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. It's right there. Why didn't they say? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And then in verse 26, let us make man in our image. The Trinity is right there in chapter 1 of Genesis. First page, my so, friend. So the and the Trinity is in the last book as well, so right? The Trinity is a clear teaching from the beginning when the Christian congregation was established. Why wasn't it accepted as a, as a doctrine until like the 4th century? Uh, no, that's not true. That's when historically they stood up against the heresy of Arianism, which you're part of, and they, they declared officially that um, God is one in essence and yet three in persons. Yeah, it, it wasn't created. It didn't begin. They, they had always believed it because the Bible is so explicitly clear. But when the heresy of Arianism was created by the devil, the doctrine of demons, then they made it explicitly clear as so many doctrinal statements are a response to the various heresies. It's what we always believe and yet now we see the threat of a certain heretic or, or group of heretics and so we now have to you know, write it down and make it explicit. Uh, but in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, the Spirit of God is hovering over the face of the waters, let us make man in our image. In Hebrews chapter 1, right? Jesus, God, our Creator. Jesus, God, our Sustainer of all creation. Jesus is, capital L-O-R-D, Jehovah. Jesus is God. All the angels are to worship Him. Michael is a created angel. Angels don't worship Michael. Jesus is the uncreated, eternal God who took upon flesh. Jesus is the Creator, says Colossians 1, 15 and following. Jesus is the Creator, says Hebrews 1. Jesus is the Creator, says John 1. Turn to your Creator. God the Son, Jesus Christ. I, don't I, die in your sin. Every time I talk to you guys and you guys try to explain the Trinity, maybe it's just me, man, but I don't get it. No, it's just you and all, <laughs> all those caught up in the Arian heresy. Yeah, it's just you and all those caught up in a cult, maybe, whether it's a Mormon cult maybe or you can a send me a girl Muslim or something cult. And maybe I can learn with pictures. Because yeah. Actually, if the Spirit of God chooses to open your blind eyes, you will see. Cry out to God that He would open your blind maybe eyes. That's, maybe that's it. Cry out to God that He would take the blinders away and unstop your ears, that you might come to repentance of idolatry, because idolaters will abide under the wrath of God, as Revelation 21, verse 8 warns. I'll, I'll try to do that. I love you, Phil. Hey, Chuck, it's been a pleasure. Thank you Don't for die time, in your okay? sins. Joel, be safe on, your, on your drive back. Uh, Don't die in your sins. Oregon. I'll be flying. I'll Oregon be flying here. Um, Portland. Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, come up to the conference summer, right? this summer. I'll be out there preaching. Love to oh, see yeah? you again. Okay, be safe, yeah. Chuck, okay? Yeah. Turn to Christ, my friend. Don't die in your sins. Okay, take it, Chuck.